Greetings my loyal minions and welcome to another episode of Illusion and Delusion aka, Amberlyn Reed. I will react to her video in today's episode, Weigh In. Trauma made me fat. So without further ado, let's get into today's riveting content. Shall we? Well, well, well. hello you guys, welcome back to another video. Hope you guys are all doing well, had a wonderful weekend, and a wonderful Easter to those who celebrate Easter. I want to thank you guys for all the continued love and support over the years. I really, really do appreciate it. So, as for my Easter, it was really good. Um, we had an intimate family uh, gathering. We watched the church service on uh, the television because none of us felt like actually going because we were all just tuckered out. Um, my dad, my, my mom, dad, and I, especially because we did a lot of cleaning this past week and we put in all the AC units, which was just, it was just really hard. It really, really was, especially the last one on Saturday. We had to go to Home Depot twice to cut the board because it didn't fit properly as it was. So it, it wasn't until like 1030 almost 11 o'clock on Saturday when we finally got the damn unit in. And honestly, some people are just like, you have know, who I've told or online are just like, why would you be putting in the AC units so soon? It still gets really cold. Well, Ohio weather is just so unpredictable. One day it can be in the 80s. The next day it can be in the 40s. So we like to do it like starting like April because that's when it starts to get warmer and we just basically play it by ear. So this week is supposed to get really, really warm and it gets really hot in this house. It's like a heat trap if there's no air conditioning. So we just didn't want to take any chances. And so that was our main goal was to get, you know, get the unit in, units in. And so we don't have to worry about it until like, what, late October, early November? So, there you go. Um, as for Amber Lynn, I can tell you right now, I'm probably going to rant in this video. The title alone is making my eye twitch. Um, she's just really been irritating me as of late. I'm, I'm still reeling with anger from the bullying of Rosie Fay. So, yeah, there you go. All right, it's on 1.25. Uh, please let me know how you feel about the audio. If it's still not to your liking, just feel free to leave a comment below because I need the feedback in order to, to you know, to best <laughs> serve you guys with uh, and make this content as enjoyable as possible. So, all right. Hey guys, so welcome to a new video. So I figured I want to start doing some random weigh-ins for you guys i really want to do this for the people who enjoy this type of content but it's mainly for me it's very like diary form but everyone has seen it through video you know i i just want to document this part of my life like how am i going to document my weight loss surgery journey but not talk about the foods i'm eating or my weight i think that's counterproductive because that's like the whole point is changing the way i eat so i can lose weight to save my life so there's so much more that goes into it, Amber. There's this the psycho psychological aspect. There's the exercise. It's not just about weighing in and showing us what you eat. But my guess is you're doing this because you're already digging in a very dry well of ideas. You, you have no content ideas anymore. Like, you, you've literally played ev every trick in the book to try to keep the viewers interested but it's it's not really working anymore is it amber i want to share that with you guys so i'm not going to have any like schedule i'm not going to say okay i'm going to do a weigh-in once a week for you guys on this day no i'm just going to throw them up for you guys anytime that i want to just like talk about how i'm doing um share my weight whether it's a gain or a loss so i like how my past weigh-in videos would go where i would talk about like how i'm doing and then i would have you guys ask me some weight related um questions which translates to, I'm only going to show you when I'm losing weight because I want to control the narrative. 
I want to try to m manipulate you further. Amber, if you're not sh literally showing yourself getting on the scale, okay, and having us see the, um, or hear the weight, the weigh in, then I don't believe it. You telling us or writing it down, hell, or even showing a picture of the scale is personally not enough for me because there are apps. And so, you know, software out there where you can easily fake that stuff. Easily. We need, I need, okay, personally for me, but just keep in mind, she doesn't have, she, you know, she doesn't have to please me specifically. I'm just saying that that's what I would like to see. Uh, I would like to see her just step on the scale each time. And maybe there should be a set schedule for weighing in that would help her. Be, be consistent is to have a goal be like okay every monday i'm going to step on the scale for you guys and see how my how i'm doing this week that's what i'm doing i have a i i did it you know i started that today um my mondays is going to be my weigh-in day and i just log in my weight and see you know how i go that really helps with like topic ideas because i don't want these videos to just be um questions that really helps with like weight whether it's a gain or a loss so i like how my past weigh-in videos would go where i would talk about like how i'm doing and then i would have you guys ask me some weight related um questions that really helps with like topic ideas because i don't want these videos to just be like hi today is my weight and i'm doing good bye <laughs> you know I hey I know she said in, pa in a recent past video that she wants to find ways to connect with her audience. So doing like questionnaire kind of things from the from the audience is a good idea to do so. But I really feel like that's a smokescreen for her to just pick the questions that she wants to pick. That she's able to lie her way through. Instead of asking, you know, instead of answering really hard hitting questions. That's just my opinion. I want to go a little bit more um, into things, into topics, talk about things. And who better to ask than the audience watching me? Of What kinds of things do you want to know about my weight loss journey or things that I'm going through? So we're definitely going to start with that. Um, I went through a phase where I did three questions per video. Then I did five. I feel like that's a lot. It's a lot of like long winded. So I think I'm just going to stick to three. So um, here they are. So the first one is, does the people... At your weight loss surgery clinic where you're getting your weight loss surgery done know about your youtube channel so yes they do know about my youtube channel they have watched my videos so it's just something that is out in the open it's like a really big part of my life <laughs> so yes they do know second question wow I would love to know what they really think about your channel, Amber. I wonder if they've just seen the recent content or have they actually seen, like, everything. And I wonder if what they see is, like, sort of affecting how they treat you as a patient. Because if they knew everything, there's no damn way that they would even agree to give in to your demands because the uh, i'm still side-eyeing this place because no reputable doctor would give this woman who is clearly unprepared for weight loss surgery a chance to get it sooner than they recommend hell i don't even think she's even a year would be enough for her keep in mind i am no doctor I, you know, I'm, I'm no expert in, in medical field whatsoever. I'm just going based off my gut when I say that. So you don't have to take what I say as like gospel. Okay. Is will you continue therapy after the 12 required sessions? Yes, 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 yes. Big fat. Yes. So I feel like therapy before the surgery is just like the beginning stages. You know, I'm just like, tipping my toes in the lake you know what i'm saying but then after surgery is when the real deal 
like I'm not saying the therapy now isn't the real deal. You know what I mean? Um, things are going to be hard after surgery. I can't rely on food for comfort anymore. So it's like, I'm going to need therapy. I'm going to need to talk about my feelings and what I'm going through. Instead of turning to food or wanting to turn to food, I'm going to be like, yes, I have that ther therapy appointment this week. You know, I can't wait to talk to my therapist, blah, 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 blah. So yes, that's very, very important to me that I continue therapy uh, before and after weight loss surgery. So the last question. Well, she isn't wrong about that. I mean, that's, she, I agree with her, you know, she's going to need therapy before and after, you know, cause this is not just a, a process where you just like, Oh, after the surgery, that's it. You know, you're cured. But see, here's what gets me though. She, she's criticized Rosie for doing exactly the same thing, which is they, you know, she's do, still doing therapy even after her surgery. Dang. Oh, just because she isn't doing it the same way as you are, you criticize her for it? She's actually done it. She's actually, you know, gone over a major, the major hump uh, of actually having the surgery. Like, you're still fighting to get the surgery sooner and trying to con the doctors. When did you first start turning to food for comfort? This started at a very, very, very young age. Um, I have always been bigger than I was supposed to be, even as a toddler. I wasn't like massive as a toddler. I was a little cutie, okay? So here are some photos if you want to see. Um, but I was, you know, a little chunky. I wasn't skinny by no means, but, you know, I had a few extra pounds. <laughs> I had a few extra pounds going on. And I just remember so well, like... Especially when I was like seven, people just telling me, oh, this is just baby weight. She's going to be fine. You know, it's it's something that stuck with me for a while. And then once I hit puberty, it was like, oh, don't worry. You know, once you hit puberty and now that you have, things are going to start evening out and you're going to lose weight. Jesus, she was, I mean, I wonder how much she weighed here. Probably what? Two to three hundred, maybe two hundred pounds, maybe? Late, you know like high 200s early 300 pounds this is like this is my senior year of high school at this moment in this picture so she must now she's younger than i am by a couple of years so she must have still been in high school in this picture maybe middle school jesus and all this stuff nope never happened so i grew up with a hard childhood i mean it's obvious i was put into foster care you know, you don't get put into foster care for nothing. I don't have trauma for nothing. <laughs> like, I I went through a lot. Things that I don't talk about, probably won't talk about on here. And I just always felt myself eating more than I should have, eating when it wasn't time to eat, eating when no one else was eating. Um, I was eating adult portions at, like, a young age, you know, eight, nine years old. And I never really understood why I was doing those things until I got a little bit older. You know, the first time that I ever process like there's an issue here I couldn't like process too hard because as a 10 year old like what are you really gonna process you know it was when I did Girl Scouts and I ate a whole box of cookies in my closet I was in an all-girls group home at the time and I was supposed to give the Girl Scout cookies over to the person who bought them but I was 10 years old um crying in my closet eating all of them it was actually like a cookie peanut butter brittle I don't even remember exactly what it was called but um this was 22 years ago wow you know, every day, <laughs> I forget how old I am until I start talking to you guys. It's where there's a lot of things that I forget in my past. A lot. Um, so many memories blocked. And it's scary because it's like, what am I forgetting? But there are, you know, some things, some trauma that I do remember, of course. And I remember the way I felt eating those cookies. I remember why I was doing it. I missed my parents a lot. Um, I remember I hadn't seen them in a while. Um, I didn't know where my brother was. And because we were separated at that point, because I went to the group home and I felt scared, I was terrified and I felt like no one understood. I was lonely. And that's the only thing I knew to do to like numb that, that feeling, those feelings and those thoughts was to eat. So teaching myself to do that at such a young age, um, no matter what I did, I couldn't unlearn it, but now was my chance.
That's why I'm taking advantage of therapy and I'm just so excited for it. I'm so freaking excited. You guys have no idea. Okay, so now that we are done. Okay, I can, I'm not, I'm gonna sit here and say, I'm gonna say this, okay? I'm not going, gonna even touch her childhood and her teenage years because she was an, in, she was an innocent, okay? It's obvious that she went through some tough shit, okay? Like, she's not this, she doesn't just magically come out of the womb this way. There, you know, there's circumstances in her life that led up to this. So, you know, as a girl who's, you know, struggling and doesn't understand, you know, at such a young age, like, can you really fault her for picking up these bad habits to at a point where she doesn't even understand what she's doing at that time? You can tell she's like literally trying to hold back, you know, hold back the emotion when talking about that. So, you know, there's telltale signs that this isn't just, you know, her just trying to manipulate the viewers. Like this is a real thing. This is real to her. This probably really happened. Um, and it, it explains a lot about who she is as a person today. And... It's just, I don't have it within me to, like, pick apart that certain aspect of her life because it's just, it's, it feels wrong. But I'm going to say this. There comes a time in one's life when you become an adult and when you become conscious of your decisions. Sure, what happened to you as a, what happened to her as a child in, in directly and indirectly led her to form bad eating habits. But you, at one point, became conscious conscious of your of your own decisions and your behavior, and you need to take accountability for that at, at that certain point. You can't just pass it off and say, "Well, the reason why I'm fat and I and I I ate myself to five to um, the six hundred pounds, basically, give or take, is because um, all, all the trauma that I had to go through." That's a very blanket statement. It's just like, there's Amber, that's just basically you saying, I'm not going to take any accountability for my actions because, oh, what happened to me as a child, you know, that's affected me so much, you know, affected me so much where I just, that, you know what I mean? Like, to where I, I, I ate myself to that point. I had no, I, even as an adult, I have no control, I have had no control over that. That's just irresponsible to say that. So um, I'm not, you know, trying to be a bitch when I say that. I'm just saying that at some point Amber needs to take accountability for how, you know, where her, like, where she, who she is now as a person and when, why she has ended up the way she has. Because, you know, pe there are a lot of people in this world that go through terrific terrific situations and some people turn out fine so it's just like a part of it is choice at a certain point in one's life with the three questions um i do want to get into my weight so there has been a lot of conspiracy that i am 600 pounds this has been going on for over six years on my channel now um always thinking i'm over 600 pounds I have never been over 600 pounds, still not 600 pounds. So there was a new scale that I bought. Hey, Amber, at this point, it doesn't matter because whether you might as well be 600 pounds with how unhealthy and mobile you are. I mean, is the, does numbers really matter at this point to you? I mean, obviously to her it does because the dreaded 600 pounds, I mean, she just has a real thing about that. But honestly, Amber, it doesn't really matter when you're 500 and when you reach the 500s, I mean, numbers start to matter less and less when you get up, when you reach those high of numbers and weight. So, um, do I believe that she's actually reached 600? Yes, I do. You cannot sit here and convince me that, um, at one point in her life, she has not been 600 pounds. No way. bought that I started using. You guys actually saw that. 
And when I first got it, it was only like two to three pounds different from the scale that I was using before. It actually made me two to three pounds heavier and I was totally fine with that. I was like, it's cool. Then there was like two weeks where I did not weigh myself at all. And I stepped on the scale and it said I was down like 30 pounds. I was like, I'm doing the damn thing. Um, it was inaccurate. <laughs> It was inaccurate. Unfortunately, that scale, it weighs feline right on point. Right on point with our other scale too. So the whole time I thought I was a certain weight, but I wasn't. So I went to my trusty scale. You know why it didn't work, Amber? Is because you probably are too big for the scale that you got. That I stopped using because of my ankle, but my ankle is completely healed, doesn't hurt ever. Um, it's totally fine. It's just the scale is a higher platform and it does do this little thing because it's on this little i'll have to show you guys um in a video or something the scale is actually meant for like car parts <laughs> i bought this years ago it was super expensive um but it's the most accurate scale um it's never faltered and i've had it for years um but it was hurting my ankle when i was getting on it but it doesn't anymore so i just i'm going back to that so when i stepped on the scale and i saw that that other scale was inaccurate uh my heart dropped I was very upset with myself. Um, my dietitian does what, know. Okay, what other scale did she get? Did she get it to reach 500 pounds and some? Because I have a hard time believing. If she's saying that the, that it weighed Feline fine, but it, did, it couldn't weigh her, shows me that she's bigger than the actual scale. So what was the, what's the weight limit on the scale that she ha that she's talking about? Because why would it weigh Feline fine and not her? Oh my weight and she knows my accurate weight which is the one that you're about to know um i'm very let down but you know what it's okay um i'm gonna be following my dietitian's rules you know doing everything that she wants me to do like food wise so i'm really excited for that to start showing up on the scale but you're going to be following the so you're just now following rules, girl you've been in the program for how long now you should be already following the rules what the fuck are you talking about? You've been in it since like what? Maybe February? I'm gonna say three months, okay? Give or take. My, my, I don't know. I'm gonna say give or take three months. I, I just, maybe late, mid to late February-ish or whatever. Maybe March, maybe she started in March. I don't know. I'm gonna say uh, the highest three months, the lowest like two months. So you've been... No, maybe two months. I'm going to say two months. Roughly two months. You've been in this program for long enough to... You should have been already on the diet a long time ago now. Like, you're just... Now you're saying you're just getting on the proper diet? What the hell? But here's my weigh-in for today. I did take a picture for you guys. So that means I you've just been bullshitting since the beginning of starting this weight loss surgery journey? I don't believe this. I'm sorry. She could have... Uh, this could be easily doctored. Seriously. But I don't know. Does it really matter at this point? You're 523.6. Does it really fucking matter? Let's just say, for argument's sake, this is a real number. Does it really matter? That you're not 600 pounds. You might as well be. 523.6? That's a lot. 23.6. And it's sad because I did think I was back in the 400s, but I am okay. I am so okay with this. Um, It kind of feels like... How would you be okay with this? I would be fucking devastated. I want to say a fresh start because this is not no phase one. <laughs> I've been in phase one since what? Um, l Let me check the time now. Uh, Okay. Since December. Everyone's always like, oh my god, Amberlynn's in her phase one. Like, I have heard this in almost every single video since like December. You guys, I'm staying. I'm staying. She, she hasn't, I mean, she hasn't lost any weight. She's pretty much either maintained, gained weight at some time since the last time. You, you, Gamberlin, you, you have to be eating over, like, over calorie, like, maybe three to four thousand calories at, at best to be able to maintain your weight. You're sitting here acting, well, I can have a reg, you know, a normal, like, calorie, yeah, a normal calorie deficit and still get, and still maintain. No, there's no fucking way. There's no way. She, but her her excuse will be, oh, it's water weight. It's water weight, you guys. I have lipedema and lymphedema. I, I don't believe you've even seen a, a specialist for that.
I think what you did is you went on to Dr. Google and you re researched a diet and then um, you researched what you thought was a good diagnosis. Because if you were actually seeing a specialist, you would be um, doing treatments to help alleviate um, your lipedema and lymphedema. You'd be wearing special shoes, for, especially for your lymphedema. So, um, I just, I don't know. I don't believe it. Sorry for the background noise. Staying in this phase. We're doing the damn thing. But yeah, it just feels nice to know, like, my real weight. And I'm just, it kind of sucks because I thought it was somewhere that I wasn't. And it's fine. You know, it doesn't change the work that I've done already or anything like that. Kind of just makes me want to push harder and do better. So I'm excited for that. So welcome to the weigh-in era. I know that I do weigh-ins and then I stop them and I do them and I stop them. But I think instead of like having you that like do that because schedule, I'm just going to do them randomly. So there won't be any like stopping and starting, stopping and starting. Anyways, I'm rambling. Um, I hope that you guys enjoyed and I'll see you in my next one. Bye. You do that because Amber, it's because people, you show no progress. You show that you're gaining weight, you know, you act, but then you put on this farce acting like you're eating healthy and exercising but really it's bullshit because it doesn't reflect on the scale and you try to come up with some bullshit excuse so then you you know you're like i'm i'm stopping weigh-ins because it's it's too triggering for me you guys like i just can't do this um ha you know what's wrong with having a schedule i don't understand wouldn't a schedule be just be better for you know because so you have an obtainable goals to reach you're, I mean, this is what I don't understand. You're, you're, you've complained to the doctors that you need an obtainable goal. Okay. You're the kind of person that needs an obtainable goal. So you need that surgery date. All right. Or else you won't be successful. But then when it comes to weighing, you know, showing your weigh-ins and having a schedule with your YouTube channel, you can't do that because it just doesn't work for you. No, so I'm just saying, honestly, Amber, you've... I think you're just bull a bullshit artist. So if you need obtainable goals for, with your weight, you know, with the weight loss surgery, um, program, then you should be okay with having a obtainable goals on your YouTube channel. This just it further proves to me that you're just bull a bullshit artist. That you're pushing to have an ur early surgery date because you think that having weight loss surgery is going to be like some magic, you know, um, procedure that's going to take away all your problems. And so you're so adamant and about getting it sooner because you think you're pr you think you have some sort of privilege because you're Amberlynn Reed. And if they give it to her, like, then they're not legit, in my opinion. I don't care how good she says they are. I don't even know who these people are, but no reputable doctor would be giving this girl the weight loss surgery at this point in time. There needs to be some real progress in order for her to be actually ready for the surgery. And at this point, I don't even see it. She's saying that she's going to be starting the diet. Shouldn't she already be on the diet? Give me a fucking break. But anyways, um, that's pretty much all I have to say. So I will see you guys in the next video. Toodaloo, my loves. Well, that's it for today's video. Like, share, subscribe, comment below, hit the notification bell. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns about this video or any other videos created on this platform please feel free to leave a comment below or hit me up on any of my social media accounts. If you want to support my channel I do have Cash App, PayPal, and Venmo. Links are in the description below. Just keep in mind you are under no obligation to donate to my channel, but any bit is most appreciated. Well, that's all for now. Toodaloo my loves. Sassy Assassin